is your fund different from other alternative and mainstream products? I think I'm not going to talk about the product, although I, I can talk a lot about the Performer Fund and, and why I believe that that's a, a very exciting vehicle and it definitely excites me. But I think the key thing that I want to focus on here is the investment philosophy of Capricorn, I believe, is quite a differentiator for Capricorn and the way we look at stocks and the way we pick stocks. Um, I believe a very attractive um, offering um, and a differentiating offering to, um, to the broader um, investment community. So basically, I want to focus on, on three things uh, for, for Capricorn. Firstly, it's how we derive at an investment case. Secondly, it is what kind of type of stocks we, we look at. And finally, how do we decide to exit a, a um, position? So firstly, how do we derive and uh, get to our investment cases? My analysts always get uh, very angry at me, but I always tell them that they must know that the moment they start with a, um, a model, they must know that the model is going to be wrong. Their answer is going to be wrong. And if they're right, it is just because they were two offsetting wrongs that equal the, the right. That is a very important thing I believe investment managers should know, is that once you start building a model, you're only going to get to a point estimate. And that estimate is actually not worth a hell of a lot if you do not look at the distribution around that estimate. You have to not question, um, ask, what do I think the earnings of a company is going to be? You have to ask, what is the market expecting the earnings of the company to be? and what we believe the distribution around that estimate that the market is expecting is, and how you should position for it. So for example, if we believe that there is a considerable um, probability that a company will exceed the expectations of the market, um, then obviously that is quite an attractive long position. If we believe there's a significant um, possibility that it's going to uh, be uh, lower than the market expectation, then that's obviously the, the short position that, that you will look for. The, um, the way you we, we build it is just basically to focus on the variables that, that will drive the, the company. So, and we will build distributions around those variables. And finally, once you've built distributions around every single variable within your model, you will get to the, very, um, the distribution of that exact point estimate to see what, what the earnings growth is going to be over a period and the sensitivity to various um, um, inputs into your model. Those are the most important things that we look at. We try to find the inputs that will really drive the earnings of, of, a, of a company and especially drive the outperformance or underperformance of, uh, of a company relative to the expectations of the market. So that's the first thing we look at. Secondly, we are momentum guys. And we're not price momentum guys. We're actually company momentum guys. We look for companies that have significant tailwinds in their business, where you can see revenue growth, you can see margin expansion, which obviously then derives in earnings growth um, being greater than the overall market. The key thing for this is that we believe that a company that has the wins in its, um, in its sales will make the right decisions. They will take front foot decisions. They will go and actively pursue um, um, opportunities that will enhance the overall um, uh, company as a whole. Companies on the back foot that currently is seeing pressure on the industry, pressure on their sector, pressure on their specific market segment with a competitor perhaps coming in, those companies will take back foot decisions. And I believe all companies have been in those situations and even in Capricorn we have seen when, when, when we're on the back foot, we sometimes take decisions not that's in the, in the interest of the company in the future, but for the company in that specific period, and it may be detrimental to the company in the future. So that's why we, we look for those types of company. We look for momentum in the business, in the um, thematic trends is what, what we call it. Um, and that's why we, uh, uh, the best way probably to describe our investment style is thematic investors. But that is perhaps a little bit too vague, but um, we look for company uh, momentum. Finally, it's how do we exit? We do not have price targets. Um, we do not have any specific level where if it hits this, we will exit or anything like that. And what we base this on is basically 
George Soros, um, in his book, The Theory of Lef Reflexivity, um, explained it quite well. He said, imagine a share price is a pendulum and the natural state is fair value. If the pendulum swings from overvalued to undervalued, it will continuous, continuously swing through that fair value point on, uh, on every single um, cycle. But it will never stop actually at that fair value. And in fact, it spends the least time at that uh, fair value because that's the time when it has the most momentum up or down. That's why we will rather ride a stock and um, um, benefit from the upside on our longs or on the uh, downside on the shorts and rather take that full uptick. And only once we see that that momentum in the share price and the valuation of the share price starts to stale, to get stale, that's when we will look to exit a, a long position or short position on the other side. We don't have pr price target and hence we, we're very comfortable sitting on a position for two, three, five years. Um, we definitely see ourselves as long-term thematic investors. Stefan, thank you very much for sharing your time today, telling us more detail about yourself, the firm and the fund. And thank you for tuning into Black Onyx. For more information, please visit our website.